So, Hamster and Gretel just aired its season one finale, which of course means it's time to tally all the references to the previous shows. I'm gonna go over all the references to both Phineas and Ferb and Milo Murphy's Law in the order that they appeared in Hamster and Gretel. Now, unlike previous references videos, I'm not going to count music unless it's literally pulled directly from the shows or is a rearrangement of a very recognizable theme. Also, because no Phineas and Ferb characters are significantly recurring in the show as of yet, each appearance will be counted as a reference. There's also some weirder references that might need more explanation than me just playing two clips back to back, so expect to hear me chime in a bit more than usual to clarify when needed. For now though, you'll find the reference listing in the bottom left, the episode being shown in the top right, and the counter bottom right. Let's jump right to it. First off, Hamster and Gretel pulls stylistically from Milo Murphy's Law in many ways. For one, the primary opening credits font of both shows is Cooper Black, with the credits being presented the same way with simple fade ins and outs. Also, the end credits are presented exactly the same, with the credits playing over stills from the episodes while a modified version of the main theme plays. Can you fix it? Can you fix it? Can you fix it? No, not really. This is awful. What are we supposed to do now? Make a giant waffle. No jokes. This is Veronica Hill on the scene at Cliffside Park where a kitten has fallen in a well. In Hamster and Gretel, Cliffside Park is one of the first locations we see in the series and used for many purposes, including the final action scene of the season. The location was first seen in Phineas and Ferb's We Call It Maze episode, after the gang's maze rolled away and took them a long way from home. Was at least three seconds deep. There's also a similar park in the Milo Murphy's Law episode, A-G-E-N-T, D-O-G. Oh, what kind of park has a cliff? Hey! Here we have an ad for a fake Shrinkinator on the back of Kevin's Bull Boy comic book. Now, the Shrinkinator design pictured actually began as Doofenshmirtz's Deflatinator Ray in The Fast and the Phineas, but was reused later in Phineas and Ferb as the design for Doof's defunct Shrinkinator that he keeps on the porch as a planter, which is where it was pulled from. I keep leaving myself notes that I keep forgetting. Shrinkinator! I'm, I'm Shrinkinator! I'll do it tomorrow. I've got to get you to that mole appearance. He's either saying he's going with you, or he regrets the impulsive mistakes of his youth. I'm not sure. That is awesome! You're my little sister. I mean, I know you got all these powers now, but I... It's my job to look out for you. I'm your big brother. Aw, Kevin, you're a great big brother. You've been looking out for me my whole life, but things are different now. You've got superpowers. Me and Hamster, we've got this. You're right. You need to open our gift. The gift! Oh, you were even trying to give me a gift and I wouldn't take it. I'm so horrible. Please, Candace, open it. You got me a coffee mug? Robot Punch! <laughs> No, 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 please don't play. Oh. The Fire Chief in Okie Dokie is a slightly modified design of Fire Chief Richard Chase, aka the dad of Melissa Chase from Milo Murphy's Law. However, here he's voiced by Dan Pavemeyer instead of Adrian Pazdar. It's a good thing it's been evacuated because it would take a miracle to put this fire out now. Well, Milo, you're the first person in history to ever start a fire with water. Thanks! Despite clearly just reusing an old design, I asked Dan about this on TikTok, and he responded that this is Richard's cousin who works in the next city over. So far, this is his only appearance in Hamster and Gretel. We've got four minutes before that meteor hits the Totally Tools building downtown. The company Totally Tools has a building in downtown... Wait, Hamster and Gretel City doesn't have a name? Well, no matter. Totally Tools is the company from the Phineas and Ferb episode Perry the Actopus that Perry briefly became the spokes animal for. So I'm only going to count it once, despite the locations surrounding it varying during its frequent appearances. This is my life. Meanwhile, elsewhere. Uh, time to try something new. Cavendish rogue log. I said I want a burger. In superhero sibling rivalry, we get a cameo from a slushy burger location. 
In Phineas and Ferb, Slushy Burger was part of the slushy dog chain where Jeremy, Candace's boyfriend, worked. While we never saw a slushy burger exactly like this in Phineas and Ferb, the location's design seems to be pulled from the slushy dog location seen here in the episode Giants, and seen again in Managing Murphy's Law, an episode of Milo Murphy's Law. Fast racer man, worst heroes of Stockton, England, but with dragons. Check this out, aqua primates. A primes, Ferb. The back of the box shows them crowning the queen, fighting robots, and designing websites. Ferb, we totally gotta get this. All right, should we mingle or just wreck this place? Here, the context is a 70s-themed high school dance. Fist Puncher and the Destructress show up and try to blend in, and their outfits look very similar to that of Dakota from Milo Murphy's Law. For further confirmation, this scene from Time Out seems to confirm that Dakota's outfit was also 70s-inspired. Yes, and you get... High school theater costumes? It's all the past. We decided to go with the 70s. Yes, but one of you is from the 1970s and one from the 1870s. Really? Which one am I? Terror has struck as influencer dogs have been stolen from puppy cons all over the tri-state area. Rabbits are lagomorphs, not rodents. Really? Dennis, the rogue agent, formerly our most wanted rodent. Lagomorph, sir. What's that, Carl? Sir, they used to be considered rodents, but were reclassified in the early 20th century. Oh, well, I'll have to fix that then. So this one is really weird. Starting in the episode Cutie and the Beast, it becomes clear that one of the background extras of Hamster and Gretel is actually just a slightly redesigned and recolored Bridget Murphy, aka Milo's mom from Milo Murphy's Law. I'm showing you most of her appearances here, but I'm not going to count each one as a reference. If you want to hear more about this oddity, check out the video linked in the card. Moving on. Um, I'm only the crossing guard at 4th Street and Maple. I'm not really sure how much authority- Silence! I'm... Yeah, like my old talking Tanya doll, which you grafted a dog's head onto. I have an owie. Mindy Mimic. Boring. Boring. It, it's called immersion therapy. We learned about that in psychology class. In the episode The Night Marionette, Gretel faces her fear of scorpions with toasters for heads, using immersion therapy to do so, with an entire song about it. The only cure that I can see is more immersion therapy. Milo Murphy's Law also has an entire episode about Zack facing his fears, and the characters specifically discuss immersion therapy and scorpions. I think that counts. Just think of it as immersion therapy! It's like, if you're afraid of scorpions, you stick your face in a jar of scorpions! That's a terrible idea! You get stung on the face by a whole jar of scorpions! Okay, bad example. On my toes, I'm a lemur and I love it, and I'm standing on my toes. Meep! What you got there? Hey, this must be his father. Don't worry, Meep. We'll fix your ship and you'll be with your dad in no time. To be fair, all these alien sightings have turned out to be false alarms. The weather balloons, the drones. That oversized python that flew away in the wind. I'm not letting you get away again, you flat piece of trash! <laughs> Again. And I'm going to use my powers to conquer the entire tri- <laughs> To summon the alien armada that will help me conquer the tri-state area! Gretel, you can lift a school bus over your head. Why do you need me to carry this? So I can make a grand entrance with my magnificent baking soda volcano. And if you're a fan of chemical reactions and say no more, I think we've got a baking soda volcano for your perusal. And if you want more, just take a look around and there are 34. Just as I was about to demonstrate my invention to the judges, a kid with a baking soda volcano stole the show. The next year, I tried again with my even bigger anator. And again, my thunder was stolen by a baking soda volcano. I can't believe you built a mammoth theme park without anything that looks like a mammoth. I'm waiting for an apology. I can't believe you built a dragon theme park without anything that even looks like a dragon. And why haven't you gotten rid of that silly chicken coop? <laughs> My support group says you're keeping me down. It's locked. We could sneak in and surprise them by myself. That works too, I guess. I had the key. It's time for danger, time for action, time for Dr. Zone. 
My alligator's smarter than your frog. Nah, uh Hey, honey, look! A platypus. Stop bucking for a crossover. What's a skobolov? Uh, is it is it a type of snake or like a, a deli meat? Skobolov is a color, more on the earthy dark shade of cyan. This is a bit continued from Phineas and Ferb in Milo Murphy's Lob, where unusually specific colors are brought to light as a joke. And we're back. Grandpa? Orange, purple, chartreuse. Since it's continued here, I think it counts. For fans in the Last truck standing, quiz this. Playing balloon carnage of death! No way. Long backstory short, I got a balloon at the carnival. I drew a face on him, I sprayed him with special lifelong lasting spray I created, and I named him Balloony. He became my best friend in the whole world, yada, yada, yada. Then one tragic day when I was protecting our garden as a lawn gnome, whatever, you remember that backstory, Balloony started floating away. I tried to reach out and grab him, but am I getting finished? And I never saw Balloony again. Please aim for the balloons, ma'am. What else would I aim for? <laughs> okay, I'm done. What about the flamethrower? The only flames I want are boiled on a chicken sandwich. Ooh, I'll take a turn. <laughs> I should have finished high school. <laughs> this reference is super inside baseball. In Strawberry Fest Forever, Carolina ends up saving Jeff Strawberry, an older man past his prime and also the one the Strawberry Fest is named after. At the end of the episode, it's revealed that he's come home to live with the Grant Gomez family. They do a whole bit with the theme song for a fictional show called Uncle Stuntman, where Jeff lives in their garage and is also a genie. She saved his life with a mighty squeeze. Now he's like a member of the family. He's forever indebted. He won't let them forget it because he's living in their garage. And also he's a genie. This is likely a reference to Doofenshmirtz becoming a part of the main cast in Milo Murphy's Lost Season 2, during which he crashed on the Murphy's couch after his building was destroyed, much to the dismay of the Murphy family, who were forced to tolerate his unhelpful presence. Oh, hi Neil from the comic shop. Oh, hi, everyone's here. Do you know an 11 letter word for something that's not important? How about unimportant? I say eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's it! Excellent! <laughs> I usually shower with my mouth open, things happen. It's lemonade. Oh, good, because I finished it. Okay, that's goodbye. Why is he living with us again? <sighs> I don't know, it's convoluted. Everything about how the song is set up evokes the feeling of Doofenshmirtz and Milo Murphy's Law, which all leads to the punchline at the end. Yeah, we're not gonna do that. I'll just show myself out. Oh no, what have you two done? <laughs> Uh, she did it? Yeah! I'll show myself out. Given the mixed response to Doof's inclusion in Milo Murphy's Law, this really seems like an indicator that the writers don't want to go that route again. Adding fuel to the fire, this is the same episode that has Doof's first ever cameo in Hamster and Gretel. Combined, I think these create a strong statement about how Hamster and Gretel is handling its cameos. At least for now. May the best man win. And the second best man end up in the polar bear exhibit. <laughs> Water tank? What? Give me those. So that's where the zoo is. <laughs> My mighty honk has activated the natural aggression of every goose in the tri state area! I'm an adult. I like dirt. I'm a goose. I want your dirt. I caramba, leave the dirt alone. Dirt is free, woman. Free! Of course, I didn't get the sound, so I'd make up my own dialogue. It was fun. Sheila, I love you, but now I have to defuse this bomb. See, good stuff, gripping. But now look, they built a giant condominium blocking my view. I tried to make up dialogue for it. I'm a condominium, I'm just standing there. See, th th where's the fun in that? Well, this is the place. Shimmy Jimmy, another gem from the Hardy Heart Toy Makers. <laughs> Wait a minute. This means that you are her. My Gretel is superhero Gretel. Ah! Shh, 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 shh. Hmm. 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 Oh. It's the giant sea otter from earlier in the season. What season? You know, summer. The, the, the season we're in. Milo's missing. 
again. Wait, is this something that happens often? At least once a season, apparently. I mean, it happened this past fall. Now it's happening here in the winter. I bet you can't hit us with navy blue, gold, and... Cerulean? Cerulean! We got the badge, the stash, and no, this isn't a rehash, cause when we did it before, you know he had a goatee. Kitty in a box, kitty in a box, almost... Are they with you? Yes. Yes, they are. We're fighting facial hair again, and now he's just a mustache if we want to be precise. If I had a nickel for every time I fought facial hair, I'd have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird, it happened twice. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird, it happened twice. Doom! Wow, if I had a nickel for every time I was doomed by a puppet, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice, right? And one day, while he was dancing in the field, he fell off a cliff and was eaten by a tiger, which is strange because tigers are not indigenous to South America. La Sombrerona was very sad and always wore her husband's hat to remember him. Some time passed and she married an accountant, but soon he didn't want to count numbers anymore. He wanted to have fun and play in the jungle. He too was eaten by a tiger. La Sombrerona wore his hat, too. She remarried three more times, but each of the husbands only wanted to have fun and died under amusing but tragic circumstances. Uh, there were a lot of tigers around back then. Anyway, La Sombrerona wore all five hats. In 1903, my great-grandfather was leading a bicycle race when he fell into a tiger pit. Years later, my grandfather skillfully avoided the tiger pit Sadly, not the tiger. Then, my father was confident he had outsmarted the tiger. But he was wrong. My point is, none of them finished in the top ten. Oh, uh, please. You wouldn't last a second without your phone. What up, girl? No way, that's fire. Send me pics. Wrong number. I say we have a contest. Whoever could go the longest with electronics wins. Oh, you're on. <laughs> this should be quick. Count me in. All right, phone's in the basket. No electricity starting now. Wait, can we start again after I look at those pics? <laughs> Get it, sense? <laughs> Actually, we have a question. Well, so do I. <laughs> have you ever seen this hat? <laughs> oh. You know, the guys on these sports teams have some pretty funny names these days. Yeah, like those hockey players. No, though, though, those are just Canadian names. This shushinator was definitely worth six easy payments of 1999. Ever feel like shushing the entire tri-state area? Try the new shushinator from Doofenshmirtz Evil Incorporated. Six easy payments. Oh, shush. Now to shush the people in this town for good. You just outsmarted me. Go by that name anymore. I've changed. I'm evil now. It's like my whole thing. Evil or not, you'll always be the nicest guy we know. The Chosen One! The Chosen One is in the house! Isn't she just the best? Yes, she is the best. So. I love the zoo! You want to know why? Because the zoo has liver and onions? Yep, the zoo has liver and onions. Liver and onions, yeah! Before you get to see liver and onions in their newly renovated habitat, I need a dedicated and trusty volunteer. Big Jen, the town's inexplicably beloved clock tower. Big Jen, we don't know why people love her. Big Jen, there's always traffic around her. Why? Big Jen, why does everybody trust her? Big Jen, we thought you'd want to see her one more. Because you're a flake just like the flake. Exactly. What's his next target? Tri-state transmitter. That's right. I'm also a doctor. You're not a doctor. You don't know everything about me. I know enough to know you're not a doctor. Ha! What do you say when a platypus sneezes? I'll go check my monetary manners book. You have a book on monetary manners? You don't know everything about me. Just say a word, hamster. Anything. <laughs> Where's he going? Pirate 
hallucinated? Oh, it was set on reverse. That makes sense. I got it. Everyone, follow Dioji! Let me ask you two a question. If a tree falls in a forest and nobody's there to hear it, does it make a sound? Everyone knows the tree does make a sound. Actually, the notion of sound depends on the perception of a third party. Your mom depends on the perception of a third party. Oh, yes. For generations, philosophers have asked, if a tree falls in the forest and no one is around to hear it, does it make a sound? The answer, by the way, obviously is of course it does. I mean, duh, right? Philosophers, get a job, thinky boy. The reason we created villains was to prepare you for a much, much greater evil that is coming next season. Next season? Yeah, you know, winter, spring, summer, yeah, they've got seasons, right? I can't believe I'm explaining this. Today I spent the entire day trying to find Milo because he was missing. He went missing last season, too. Last season? Yeah, in the fall, it was a big hullabaloo. Pizza roll? Don't mind if I do. And that's all the references in Hamster and Gretel Season 1. While there was some other supplemental content made alongside the season, such as the Random Rings episode where Doofenshmirtz calls Hamster and Gretel, as well as the Chibi Tiny Tales crossovers, I'm not counting any of the references in these since they're not canon. Let me know if there's any references you think I missed or should have counted in the comments below. And if you haven't seen it, check out my video compiling every reference to Phineas and Ferb found in Milo Murphy's Law. It's <laughs> quite extensive. Thank you to all my patrons as always for your support, and I'll see you back in Dimension 1.